Welcome to the Washington Heights Church Podcast. We're so glad you're here. Each week, we bring you the latest Sunday message filled with God's Word to help strengthen your faith and deepen your walk with Christ. Whether you're tuning in from home, your commute, or anywhere in between, we're thrilled to have you join our community. So grab a cup of coffee, find a cozy spot, and let's get started. Well, we are continuing a series Pastor Roy kicked kicked us off with last week, Heroic Faith, talking about uh, this passage from the book of Hebrews um, that that kind of lists all these heroes of the faith from the old and and understanding what heroic faith means. Before we dive into that, one quick announcement. If you have have little ones, if you have kids or preteens or teenagers, our Wednesday night activities are kicking up uh, this, this coming Wednesday. So you can visit our website, whc.faith, for more information. But something fun for all of the ages. All right, let's dive into this one. Um, this one was a, a, a tricky message because the story that we're going to be talking about today is the story of Abraham, and it's massive, and there's a lot to talk about. We could have spent a whole year on a series of Abraham, and I've got one message. So, buckle up. Uh, let me ask you this, Faith. Uh, this, this Faith. This question. Is this journey of faith really worth it? Is this life really worth this journey that we have been called on? And if you really think about some of the things that God asks of us, uh, it is difficult. It is a difficult question to answer. Because a lot of times we say, okay, I'm going to place my, my faith in God. And we sort of expect now that I've done that, that God's going to make my life great. And I'm going to be happy and everything's going to be perfect. And it never is that way. And, and then what happens is we kind of end up feeling disappointed or let down by God that things didn't work out the way that we thought he should have worked them out for us. What ends up happening is that we just end up hoping for the best. Well, I've placed my faith in God, so I just, fingers crossed that everything works out. And when it doesn't, how do we respond? A lot of times we lean towards that hoping for the best to make us happy. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today is, is, our, is our happiness and where that comes from. Because a lot of times when we've placed our faith in God and then we get let down, we're quick to say, why, why didn't you? And then you fill in the blank. So this letter in the book of Hebrews, uh, where we're going to be at today, is uh, really focusing on this passage. It says, By faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, Abraham obeyed. And he went not knowing where he was going. That is profound, that is difficult, that is hard to understand. And yet, that is something that comes across our lives so often. You ever love to go out and just drive? Not really have uh, any direction or agenda? My wife and I, we love to just get in the car and go. We don't put up a map. We we just drive. And we sort of allow ourselves to kind of get lost just driving around. And we'll come to an intersection or a cross on the road. I'm like, all right, babe, left or right? Left or right? Left or right? Left or right? Yeah, you got to make a call now. Uh, Left. Okay, go. And then we just, and we keep doing that. We just go and explore. We just go out and drive for hours, just sort of getting lost, cruising around. And it's a blast. We have a great time. We sit and chit-chat, enjoy the scenery. uh, And it's just one of those things that we kind of love to do in our our pastime. Now imagine doing that in a moving truck. You got your kids all in there, been driving for hours, you're stressed out. You got all your stuff, all your valuables, your entire life packed up into one truck. All right, where are we going? I don't know. Left or right? I don't know. Who could do that? Not too many people would be willing to do that. What God has called and asked of Abraham. He went out not knowing where he was going. This this passage in in Hebrews, what is happening here? And we're going to get into this story a little bit more. But I want to kind of address the purpose of of this passage that the author of Hebrews is, is writing on. 
He's writing to these, the, the, the Jewish community who have been recently converted to Christianity. They've recently put their faith in Jesus and they were kind of fired up and excited and, and life is good. We're following this new guy named, named Jesus and the teachings that he had and the, the grace and the forgiveness and the mercy and, and all the stuff that he offers. And, and, but now we're reaching this point where our, our faith is starting to kind of dwindle and, and they're asking themselves, is it really worth it? Is it really worth all the stuff that we have to go through just to follow after this God? If you look at the passage just before this in chapter 10, starting at verse 32, it says this. It says, think back on those early days when you first learned about Christ. Remember how you remained faithful even though it meant terrible suffering. Sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule and you were beaten. And sometimes you helped others who were suffering the same things. You suffered along with those who were thrown in jail, and when, you, and when all you owned was taken from you, you accepted it with joy. You knew there were better things waiting for you that will last forever. So do not throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that, has prom- that, that he has promised. For in just a little while, the coming one will come and not delay, and my righteous ones will live by faith. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. But we are not like those who turn away from God to their own destruction. We are the faithful ones whose souls will be saved. Some of you maybe have been on a similar journey. Maybe you've come from a different faith and that choice has caused suffering and persecution in your life. Maybe you're at that point where you're asking yourself, is is this really worth it? Is what I'm suffering and dealing with really worth this whole thing? Maybe you've grown up in the church. That's my story. I grew up in the church. I've been going to church as long as I can remember. And there was times where I didn't even know what I believed, but we went to church because that's what we always did. And there's those moments in my, in my faith journey where I've just sort of not really known, uh, is this really worth it? When I look out to the rest of the world and it seems like everybody else out there is having a really good time, doing whatever they want to do to make themselves happy, and yet I'm, I'm following after this God who has called me to live a certain way, believe certain things, and I keep asking myself, is it really worth it? Maybe you're in church for the first time ever and you're going, what did I get myself into today? But maybe you're asking yourself today, is it worth it? God called Abraham to do something incredible. And by faith he obeyed not knowing where he was going. If I were to ask you this question, are you happy? How would you respond? If I were to say, how's your soul? Like, how, like not just on the surface level, but how are, how are you doing? Like at the core, at the depth of who you are, how's your soul? Some of you may be in a good place. Some of you may be in a rough place. But it's that, that, that constant pursuit of happiness, right? We have this, this idea that we, we uh, deserve to be happy. Our society, our culture out there would tell us that every single life has this intrinsic right, this value uh, to be happy. That you deserve to be happy, so I want you to go and do whatever it is that you need to do to make yourself happy. So the problem with our idea of faith is that we kind of expect that same thing from God. That I've placed my faith in God, and so now I expect God to make me happy, to make things in my life go the way that I think they should. And when they don't, when when these expectations that I've placed on God don't go the way that I want them to go, we decide to say, well, is this really worth it? 
Is this way of life really worth living? Is this God really worth chasing after? It's kind of hard to have faith in a God when it just seems like I'm being let down day after day. And maybe that's where you're at today. Maybe you've walked through these doors, heartbroken, devastated, in a place that you never thought you'd be, and yet here you are. And maybe, like the author of Hebrews is writing, you're at a place in your life when you're asking, is it really even worth it? I want to talk about Abraham a little bit because the, the, the journey that he goes on is unique and different and hard to understand, but so incredibly powerful. If you flip back in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 12, all the way back to the beginning, this is the story that, that the author of Hebrews is talking about, this story of uh, a man named Abram who God changed his name to Abraham. He was 75 years old when God comes to him He's, he's reaching that age when he's ready to settle down. His wife, they've been married. They've been unable to have children. She's barren, so they have no kids. They're getting older in age. And now God comes to him and asks him one of the most bizarre things. If you look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Now the Lord said to Abram, now this is the first context in the Bible that we have of Abram and, and the Lord ever communicating. There's nothing before that. So it wasn't like they had this long-standing relationship where they knew each other well. We, we, we aren't given that context. It just says the Lord showed up to Abram and said, I want you to go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I want you to go from everything that you know. I want you to go from your family, from your father's house and leave everything behind to a place I'm going to show you. Okay, well, but where, but where? Don't worry about it. Just go. So, like, that way or like that, don't, doesn't, don't worry. I want you to go. Who could do that? I couldn't. I'll be honest. I don't know if I could. If God came to me and said, I need you to go, without giving me any, any direction, without giving me a list of all the steps and things that I need to do, without having my plan, being able to be set in stone, knowing exactly all the steps I'm going to take, knowing the direction and the roadmap that I'm going to be going on, I don't know if I could. And I have to ask myself, well, why then did Abram, why, what made him decide to say, you know what, this sounds worth it. This is a good deal. I'm going to get something out of it. I'm going to, I'm, it's worth leaving all my family, worth leaving my people, worth leaving my, my tribe, this place that I've grown up in. I'm going to leave it and I'm going to go to this unknown place. If you look at the next couple of verses, he says, God, he says, and I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. Okay, well, that sounds enticing, but like, what does that mean? Like, you're going to make my name great and I'm just going to be super popular or? I think a lot of times we get hung up on these two lines. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great. That sounds great, but, but, but where's the... Give me, the, give me the stuff. Give me the, what, what, you want me to risk all this stuff for, but for what? And I think it's this last line right here. So that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. This is a bit of a weird request from God, isn't it? Asking this elderly man and his barren wife to leave everything behind, to pack up and just go with no sense of where they're going for the purpose of making his name great. And yet Abram chooses to go. And I think it has something to do with this line right here. Maybe, just maybe knowing that being a blessing to other people 
has more depth and power in finding joy and peace in our lives. And that's why Abraham was willing to go. You ever love to give gifts to people? You know, my wife and I were just reflecting back on, on Christmas. <laughs> Uh, you know, watching the kids opening the gifts and just the, the joy in watching the, them experience opening their gifts, right? And, and nine times out of 10, they're opening up presents and I'm like, uh, who's this one from? This one's from us. Okay, all right. What did we get you guys? And they open up their gifts and they pull them out and they're so excited. And, you know, uh, there were some gifts that I didn't know that we got for them. And, and, uh, but it's fun watching them. What was even more fun for me was watching my wife knowing what the kids are going to be getting and watching the joy in her face, watching their joy. You ever surprised somebody with a gift that maybe they didn't know was coming, but something they really wanted, right? And you have probably more excitement and more anticipation watching them opening this gift that they're going to love, but you probably have more joy watching them open this gift because you know how special this thing is. And you're like, I can't wait to open it. And just this, this overwhelming excitement comes out of you because you have poured out of yourself into somebody else's life with no expectation in return, right? That's what giving a gift is. God called Abraham to sacrifice his comfort because the blessing was greater. What he was going to receive was greater than his agenda, was greater than his plans, was greater than the, the, the set up for the year that he had. I've got all my, my list of all the things I want to accomplish in 2022. And God says, yeah, but I'm going to take you over here. I'm not really going to tell you where you're going, but you're going to go. And I'm going to throw all the plans that you've made kind of up in the air. And we may say, but is it really worth doing that? And God says, my blessing will be greater than you can know when you decide to give of yourself. What was the blessing? The blessing was the opportunity to be a blessing to others because he believed. Let me ask you a question. What are you doing with your blessings? If you're watching online, I want you to write the word blessings with an exclamation mark. Write that into the chat. What are you doing with your blessings? And some of you might be saying, well, I, you know, God really hasn't given us a lot of stuff or a whole lot of money. We can't really give our, our, our stuff. Do you think that blessings only come in the form of stuff? Or do you think maybe it comes in the form of a smile and a, hey, welcome to church as you're standing at the front door? You'd be surprised um, as, a, as a pastor, the things that we hear that people are bringing in with them through these doors into this room. The hurt, the heartache, tragedies that have been experienced in life the brokenness that comes into this room is overwhelming from people that you would have never thought. And they're carrying around this, this heaviness, hoping for a moment of reprieve as they come into this room. And I wonder how much of a difference a smile with a, hey, I'm glad you're here, can make in somebody's life. You'd be surprised. And what God is calling of us, what God is calling of Abraham is to trust him, to give of himself, to be a blessing to other people with the gifts and talents that God has given him. And in return, Joy found at the deepest level of your soul and your heart. See, our, our problem is that we think God has given us things and stuff to make us happy. Thank you, God, for this thing in my life. And while the stuff and maybe the money or whatever it may be might bring us temporary joy... 
maybe the purpose of those blessings in your life is to bless other people. God called Abraham to change his plans in an incredibly difficult way. For the purpose of being a blessing to other people. See, the problem is, is that when we start thinking about what we can do for ourselves, that is a sin-oriented mindset. In fact, I want to look at the, the characteristics of sin, and you'll notice that it is all inward-focused. It, it is being self-sufficient instead of being faithful. I'm going to trust in my plan, my ways, because I think I know best for my life, rather than trusting in God. It's trusting in your own self-will instead of submission toward God. It's self-seeking instead of outwardly caring, and it's self-righteousness instead of humility. It is this inward-directed, inward-focused, I'm going to focus on everything right here for me rather than pouring out, but you'll find that when you pour out instead of focus inward, there is blessing and joy and happiness to be found. Sin focuses inward. The kingdom of God focuses on others. It seems backwards. It seems backwards when you look out there and everything out there says, no, 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 you, you owe it to yourself to be happy. Hey, as long as you're happy and not hurting anyone, go for it. How many times have you heard that? As long as you're happy. God didn't call Abraham to be happy. He said, no, 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 I want you to sacrifice the things you thought, the plans you thought you had, your agenda, your plans, and I want you to go to a place that I'm not even going to tell you. I'm going to direct you there later when you place your faith and your trust in me. And in the process of this journey, you will find that there's more joy and happiness in your soul when you do it my way instead of trying to do it the world's way. It may take a reorientation of your life because so much of our lives is pointed inward, getting the stuff, doing the things that will make me happy, that will make me feel joy just for a few moments in my life. It takes a reorientation to say, you know what, I'm going to pour these gifts and blessings that God has given to me, whether that's my stuff, whether that's my time, whether that's my ability to listen well to people or put a smile on my face and welcome people to church. I'm going to give of what God has given me because in the end I know that there is real joy to be found there. And by doing so, we get to join God in fulfilling his kingdom purpose. When Jesus was here on the earth, you know what he said? He said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I am the kingdom of heaven, Jesus says. And when he called his followers to follow him, it says they dropped everything they were doing, just like God called Abraham. I want you to drop everything and, and follow me into, into the unknown, into this place of not knowing where we're headed, but knowing that there is more joy to be found there than in making your own plan and your own agenda. We get to join God in fulfilling his kingdom purpose. And that's by helping people meet and follow him. God called us to do two things. Jesus commanded us. He says, I want you to love the Lord your God with everything you have, with your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength, with everything that's in you, love God. And equal to that, I want you to love the people around you as much as you love yourself. We love to give ourself stuff, so that means loving the people around you by giving of yourself. In this story, at one point before, um, you know, God has promised to, to Abraham that he's going to make a great nation out of him. And I bet he was scratching his head a little bit because He's realizing, you know, I'm, I'm 75 years old. My wife isn't able to have kids. How is this going to work? And at one point, God is meeting with Abraham, trying to explain what's going to happen. 
It says they're sitting in, in his tent and God brings them outside of the tent in the evening. He says, Abraham, I want you to look up at the stars. You ever gone out like into the Uintas camping where there's no lights and look at the stars? Oh, man. God says, now do me a favor. Count them if you can. It's impossible. What? He says, the generations that are going to come from you will be more than the stars in the sky. And in Genesis 15, 6, it says, and he believed the Lord and he, God, counted it to him as righteousness. What did he believe? Did he believe in God? No. He did. But that's not what counted to him, what God counted to him as righteousness. There's plenty of people that believe in God, that believe there's something out there that refuse to live a life that has anything to do, anything to resemble him. The Bible says that even the demons believe in God. They know he exists. So what was it that God credited righteousness to Abraham for? It was believing in the promise. Believing that this promise that seems impossible was going to come true. And because he could believe, God says, I'm going to count it towards you as righteousness. You know what it doesn't say? God slapped him on the back and said, good job, buddy. Here's a lot of stuff. Why righteousness? The word righteousness means to be made right with God. Because of sin, we are in this broken relationship. We have this perfect, holy God, and then there's us, broken, sinful people. And God says to Abraham, because you've believed my promise, we're now made right in this right relationship. And when you place your, your faith and your trust in Jesus, he says the same thing to you. You are now made right with this holy, mighty, powerful God when you place your faith in him, when you believe in the promises that he's made, that he's going to keep his promises. What's incredible about this is that once we are declared righteous in God's sight, we now get to join God we get to be a part of his kingdom story. Have you, ever, have you ever thought about that for a second? That the, the almighty powerful God of this universe who spoke these stars and planets into existence with his words is asking for you to join him in fulfilling his kingdom purpose. He doesn't need you. He wants you. That is mind-blowing. That the God of the universe wants you to help him. That wants you to be a part of this story of spreading his love to the ends of the earth. And the minute he counts you as righteous because of your faith and the promises that he's made to you, you are now a part of that story. There's a part of this story that's hard to understand. Like I said, uh, Abraham's wife, Sarah, was barren, unable to have kids. God makes this promise that he's going to make generation after generation after generation come from Abraham. And God tells him, I'm going to allow your wife to have kids. And Abraham and his wife, Sarah, both laughed at God at that idea in their elderly years to be giving birth to a child. And yet God fulfilled that promise. And they gave birth to a son named Isaac, whose name means laughter. When Isaac was about 13 years of old, God comes to Abraham and he says, I, I, I want you to, uh, I want you to sacrifice your son. And I don't know about you, I don't know if you've read this story before or not, 
But when I read this story, I have a hard time not asking myself, what kind of sick God would make a promise for a a child to come from these people? An An impossible thing, this miracle, he fulfills that promise, he fulfills this miracle, and now he wants it, this miracle to be sacrificed? What kind, of, what kind of God would do that? Man, maybe you've struggled with that question or a similar one. What kind of God? Within the last three months, Within the last three, one, three months, my, my wife has lost her father and her brother. And that question, what kind of God? And maybe you've dealt with tragedy or loss or suffering in your life. And you've found yourself asking, what kind of God would ask this of me? What kind of God would ask this of Abraham? And I had to think about this a long time before giving this message. And I realized that this all-powerful, all-knowing God of the universe didn't need to know for himself if Abraham believed him or not. This, this passage in Hebrews that we're, that we're going through says that by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. So God's testing him? Why? Does God need to know if he believes or not? Does he not know? Of course he knows. So why did God ask this of him? He didn't have to sacrifice his son, by the way. God fulfilled this promise and provided a sacrifice for Abraham. But why go through the why go through the charade? Why go through the through through this test? For God to know something? Or for Abraham to know something? God wanted Abraham to know that his steadfast faithfulness will yield a much greater result than his life could contain. This promise that God has made to Abraham is so much bigger than his immediate circumstances. And that's what God wanted him to understand. That for generation and generation and generations to come, because of his faithfulness, all the way down to Jesus being of the line of Abraham, because of his faithfulness, And God is asking of your faithfulness. Jesus wants us to know the same thing, that that our steadfast faithfulness and trust in his name, in his plan, in his will, outside of ourselves, will yield much greater results than than even this life can contain. Results that will pass down from, from us to generation after generation. Are you willing to set aside your agenda your plans, your, your things that you have that you know exactly, this is what I'm going to do this year. Nothing's going to change those plans. And God says, yeah, but what if I ask of you differently? Knowing that your faith will result in something so much greater than your life. Because in that, there is joy at a soul level that is greater than we could even begin to, to imagine. Jesus, in his own words, he says, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek after him first. Seek after living out and fulfilling the kingdom purpose that God has given to each and every one of us who have placed our faith and trust in Jesus. And when you choose to live that way, when you choose to live outwardly focused, there is joy and happiness to be found there. He says, and and seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, these things that you're asking from God, God, help me to get through this. God, help me to figure out how to handle this situation. God, help me to understand the purpose of all this stuff. God, the last two years, I don't even understand what is going on in our country. Will you help me figure it out? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all this stuff, these doubts and worries that you have will be added to you.
Paul in the book of Romans, he writes, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. It's not the stuff that you think will make you happy. But of righteousness, being made right with God and peace and joy found in the Holy Spirit. If you're finding yourselves having a hard time finding joy and happiness in your life, maybe a life reorientation is what is needed. That it is time to start thinking outwardly, giving of the gifts and the talents that God has blessed you with, not just the money, not just the stuff. God has given every single one of you a talent or a gift, a blessing, and you have the opportunity to either keep it to yourself or to share it, to spread it so that you can be a blessing to other people. And when you decide to do that, God says there is joy and peace found there in the Holy Spirit. True happiness is found in surrendering our plans to God. In believing that maybe, just maybe, the all-powerful God of this universe might know a little bit better for us than we do. Believing in his promises and joining him in being a part of the kingdom of God. What a gift that is that we get to join God who doesn't need our help, but invites us to join him in fulfilling his kingdom purposes by spreading his love, his grace, his mercy, his forgiveness to the ends of the earth. Would you bow your heads with me? And before we pray, maybe... um, Maybe you're here and you've never made that choice to, to, to place your trust in these promises of God. To trust that he is a savior, that he can save you from your own self-destruction, from your sin, and make you right with him when you place your faith in him. Maybe you've never made that choice before. And maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to surrender your will and your plans over to God and say, God, I don't know what this year holds. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't understand where I'm going or why you have me going here, but I will trust you. I will follow you because your plans, your promise will be fulfilled. Your promise to love me, to never leave me or forsake me, your promise to forgive the sins that I have committed to make my life right with you will be fulfilled. God, it's it's one thing to stand up here and talk about these things, but I know it's another thing to live them out day to day. So right now, in the powerful name of Jesus, we ask God for the ability to have the kind of heroic faith that Abraham did. To trust that even though we may not know where we're headed, that we can be a blessing to other people because of the gifts and talents and blessings you have given us. That if we decide to pour out of our lives just as you have poured out of yours, that it is there that you will fill our lives with a peace that we can't even begin to understand. Help us to reorient our lives focused outwardly, God. Giving of ourselves so that we may be a blessing because there is where joy and happiness will be found. In your name we pray, amen. Hey, really quick, if you you decided today is a day that I want to place my faith in Jesus, can can you do me a favor? Will you just text this number? Um, We we just want want to journey with you. We want to get some materials into your hands that will help you along in this process. If you've never taken that step before, we would love to be there with you and help guide you. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Be blessed. We'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed today's message. If you found this sermon meaningful, please subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Your support helps us reach more people and spread the word. Stay connected with us throughout the week by following us on social media 
at Washington Heights Church on Facebook and Instagram, and by visiting our website at whc.faith. For more information and additional resources, check out the podcast description below. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.